Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Uh, today we are going to talk about word searches. For those of you who don't know, uh, a word search is just a grid of letters where you hide words in there and you uh, usually pass it to kids to try and find words within it. And so uh, this is a great example with uh, a lot of different animals. So you might find fish or crocodile among a sea of random letters. What I wanted to do was find a way to create my own, um, partly because most of these word search generators output PDFs or, or uh, images, but it's also a really uh, interesting and, and good way to exercise um, your, your algorithms, your thought process of how to create one of these things. So um, it's not particularly useful if you're a teacher in a classroom because there are dozens if not hundreds of word search makers out there where you obviously don't have to create it. Um, we did a code sculptor and I'm going to uh, quickly run through the video where I do the work but um, we'll come back and walk through the code in a moment. Okay, so we want to know how this works. Uh, let's go down to the bottom and see what we wanted to do first. Um, here's, here's the inputs here. Uh, what we're going to do is determine how big of a grid we want. So in this case, we want a grid of 10 letters by 10 letters, 100 letters in total. And this is a very short word list, but we're going to put three animals in there, cow, pig, and chicken. And what we're going to do is run the create word search uh, function throw those three things in there and as a result we're going to get one output <clears throat> now the output is going to be a list of lists this giant long one at the top here how this works is it's going to be a list of lists so each list inside is going to be one row and they're going to be stacked on top of each other now inside that list is going to be a series of letters that was confusing even to say out loud. So what we actually did is what is more human readable is actually break out all of those rows and print them out individually. And this is how the grid looks. This is how a human would see the grid. 
and then this long thing is what the computer is seeing. It's just a giant long list with lists inside it. But to us, it's going to be a number of rows that are stacked on top of each other. And if we just do a very quick check, um, I see chicken over here. So we are finding uh, the words in here. And I think, no, that's not pig. Um, cow is in here, pig is somewhere else. So we should have all the characters. <clears throat> How did we do this? Well, we're going to jump through the code a little bit back and forth here. Uh, first things first, you want to find uh, a couple variables that will help you out. The first one is this word search grid. This is the global variable for us to um, store that word search. In retrospect, now that I'm saying it out loud, we could probably embed it right in the create word search function, but whatever. And same with the filled spaces. That could they could both probably move right in here, but let's keep them global. Uh, the filled spaces is a dictionary. And what we're going to, what I'm going to explain to you is our approach um, through these supporting functions. But before we get into that, the last thing is we put some, uh, some constants in here. So Northeast, East and Southeast. That means that words can go, uh, sorry, this way is that right? Yeah, this way, this way, and this way. They always go from uh, left to right. It's English. But in theory, we could have done other directions. But for me, I wanted to keep track. And the easiest way uh, for us to, to know what, what um, direction to go in is to assign them some constants. So 0, 1, and 2. If I just use that down here, I wouldn't know what it is. I just assign some constants. <clears throat> okay, so let's quickly go over the general idea with the support functions here. There's going to be choose random location, check overlap, place word, and fill grid. These are very logical. I'm going to have an empty 10 by 10 grid. Not going to have any letters in there first. What I'm going to do is randomly choose a location in that grid. Um, and I'm going to place a word there. So if I have a 10 by 10 grid, I put in a bunch of random words, I can fill in the rest of the gaps later. But all I have to do <coughs> is place the words in that grid first. The only problem is after I put down, say, pig, I might put down cow, and there might be an overlap. And that's where this support function comes in. So first, we're going to choose a random location check if there's going to be an overlap, put the word in that grid, and finally, once everything's done, we're going to fill the grid with random letters to, to confuse you. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to go through here, um, and we're going to create the empty grid first. This is the overarching function. This is the big one that's create word search. It's going to call each of these support functions in turn. First of all, we're going to create that empty grid, nice and simple. Uh, for the height, we're going to create a number of empty lists. And then within those lists, we're going to go the width, create empty letters. And it doesn't have to be 10 by 10. It could be 5 by 5. It could be asymmetrical. It could be 5 by 4 or 4 by 5 or any other combinations. We're going to create that empty grid into this global variable. Then the next bit is we're going to populate the grid with words. So we're going to check each word in that word list, and we're, gonna, we're going to go through that process of running through each of these support uh, functions. So first of all, I'm going to go for a word in the word list, each word. We're going to create a variable here saying checking whether there's an overlap. Now, while overlap is true, we're going to keep picking locations until we find one that doesn't overlap. So next, next step is we're going to choose a location. Remember these constants. So it could be going um, this way, this way, or upward. So northeast, east, or southeast. Um, once we've chosen a direction, we're going to pick a random location um, with the, and we're going to get coordinates for it. The next bit is we're going to check overlaps. We're going to use this to check overlaps. 
And then finally, if there's no overlap, we're going to place the word down. The magic here is each of these support functions. First of all, choosing the random location. We're going to have the height and the width, so 10 by 10, but we're also going to get direction and the word. The idea here is, let's say you have a you know, 10 by 10 grid. Let's say this particular grid. Okay, we want to put down chicken. A random location can't start here because there is just not enough room to go further east to actually finish C-H-I-C-K-E-N. Um, you have to start basically from this row or or to the west of it. And that's all that this function is doing. So if it's uh, northeast, we're going to pick uh, a random uh, height uh, that, that, that is, is long enough, um, so far enough down, and then a random uh, width. I think the better idea is random x, y coordinates that will, again, match it so that it has enough uh, room. So in this case, it would be the bottom two, bottom three rows, so that there's enough room to go northeast because it will go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, each of these are the same thing, and it's kind of annoying to figure out, but I think it's it's simple enough. And all it's going to do is return the coordinates of the first position of the letter. Next, we're going to check uh, we're going to check overlap. We have these coordinates, x, y coordinates. Once again, we're going to go the direction and we're going to go with the words. And what we're going to do is go through each of these boxes and check if there's something already in there. Remember that filled spaces dictionary that we had? That's the trick. Every time we place a word down, and we're going to come to that later, we're going to put it into that dictionary. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that coordinate and we're going to uh, check if it's already in the filled spaces dictionary. Now, if it's a first word, that will never happen. It's a blank space. But if you put the second word, it's very conceivable that it will cross and, and, uh, and conflict with another one of your words. <clears throat> now, the other possibility is that you do have a conflict, but the two letters match. That is okay. So if, um, if the letter is different, then, then we can't. There is, we return true. So we're going to check if the current coordinates are in the filled spaces, we're going to check if the letter uh, doesn't match. And then if those things are both there, then we're going to say there's an overlap, that something is in that filled space and it is not the same letter that you need. Otherwise, we're going to loop through each letter. We're going to shift one to next to next to next. And, and we're going to check, do the same check, and, and make sure there's no overlap. And then if you make it all the way to the end of this loop, you're going to return false. There is no overlap. Once you know there's no overlap, uh, you can place a word down. And all it is is uh, for each letter, you're going to go through you know, uh, one, one step to the left every time again um, and, and uh, place the word in that global word search grid and also register it in the filled spaces um, dictionary. So what I want to show you very quickly is um, printing the filled spaces. That way you can understand um, how this will look. This dictionary is uh, using tuples as the key. Each one is a coordinate, and you you can understand that there there should ever only be one value in that coordinate. Uh, once it's claimed, you should not be able to replace it with another letter, um, and there should not be more than one of these six four tuples in here. Then uh, you just search and you find out what letter is in there. It's actually a very very simple exercise, but. Um, you, you actually have to lay yourself out there and think about it. I hope that was interesting. I hope that was helpful. Um, 
and do leave me a comment if you enjoyed this video. Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.